Hi guys, in this video I explain constructors and the super keyboard in the context of inheritance. I have a class A here. This class has a single member variable named member A and it has a parameterized constructor. This constructor declares a single parameter named value of type int to initialize the member variable. It also has a method. This method is called method A, and it outputs a single statement. It outputs the method name and then the value stored in its member variable. Now I want to create a class that inherits from A. So this class is called B, and it extends A. This relationship now defines A as a parent class or superclass and B as a subclass or child class of A. Now I get an error here. The error I get because the parent class only has a parameterized constructor. It does not have a default constructor. And so I have to declare a constructor that calls the parent constructor. One way to do this is define a default constructor. But inside the default constructor now, I also have to invoke the super constructor. And the super constructor can be invoked with the super keyword. For example, super, and let's say by default, I always want to pass in zero. So the member variable member A will be initialized to zero. Now, creating an instance of this class, let's call it O1. of type B, this calls the default constructor of B. And now here, the default constructor then invokes the constructor of the superclass with a single integer. And this then initializes A. So now when I call method A on this object, it will output the value that I initialized it with. This one would be value zero. Now I can also define a constructor that expects the value of the super constructor. And then with super, I can pass in the value that is passed to it. Note that I don't have to declare um, the default constructor. So if I don't want to have it, I can remove it. I just give it showing you the different options that are available. So if I have a parameterized constructor, I create an object O2. This will be of B as well. And now I use the parameterized constructor and pass 5 in as an argument. Then I call method A on it. And so running this, this initialized the member variable with 5. And it outputted it here when I called method A on the object 2. So super can be used to invoke the super constructor. Super can also be used to access member variables or methods of the superclass that have the appropriate access, access level. So here, this one is private, so I can only directly access it within A. I don't have direct access to it from B. But let's create another method here, method B. And this outputs method B to the console. Now let's say in, whenever B is invoked, I also want to run the code that is defined in method A. So I could do just method A. I could do this dot method A. Or I can make it explicit, super dot method A. Now there's really no difference in this case, however, if once you know and, and learn about overriding, um, we can define the exact same method as the parent class in the subclass. And so then super makes a difference because then super says, do we want to invoke the one method of the parent class or do we want to invoke it on the subclass? So super always prefers something that is defined in the parent class. So to summarize, we have super 
to invoke a constructor or to access any members of the parent class. It can be member variables or member methods. Now running this, oh, I, I should change this one to B, so method B, and then running this, we will see that B is involved and it's still output, output at A. So there's the first line uh, with zero was the object that invoked the default constructor. And the second two lines is from method B. Method B then invoked method A with super in front and then its own output with method B. I hope this gives you an idea of how to use constructors and how to call constructors from a subclass as well as how to use the super keyword. Thank you for watching.